crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here as part of a Lawn Fawn Lovers collab. So I had met some other ladies who have YouTube channels and or blogs and they also like Lawn Fawn, were part of a Lawn Fawn group together on Facebook and they wanted to do a little bit of um, a a hop together, sort of share some projects around a theme. And so this month's theme is winter. We'll all be making a winter card and you can check out their links in the video description below. I've, um, as yesterday, I did a similar one where the Valentine's theme, and it's just nice to be able to connect with some crafters in the community and hopefully introduce you guys to some new crafters you'll enjoy. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Waves stencil over a piece of watercolor paper, and I'm taking my Distress Crayon and coloring in the areas between the stencil so that I can basically get a stenciled pattern with the Distress Crayon color, and I also used a silver Distress Crayon over it. I did know going into it that it wasn't going to give me a perfectly stenciled look because Distress can be kind of messy, it's not going to color perfectly, it doesn't have like a point that allows you to get into every little nook and cranny of this detailed stencil. But I was able to wet the Distress Crayon and then go in with my finger and blend it out. You could also blend it with a baby wipe and then you probably wouldn't have to wet it. I just took one of my Captron water brushes there and applied a little bit of water. I liked that because I could control how much water I applied. I didn't want it to be too wet because if it was really wet, then a lot of it would seep under the stencil and you'd notice it even less. And once I had rubbed it in pretty well with my finger, I actually thought about going back a little bit with the brush and um, I felt like that helped me get into some of the even smaller details. So it depends on how much you want to get into those details. When I blended it out, I felt like I lost a lot of the silver. So I decided to go back in with a bit more silver and then I also added purple because at the time of recording this video, I didn't have a lot of Distress Crayons and I only recently picked up a few more on a really, really good clearance sale, like 75% off at a local shop. And so I do have a few more colors to work with now. But I uh, blended out just a little bit of purple into it so it had some interest and some more of that silver. And then you can see what the final result is. I'm pretty happy with it. It's not a perfect stencil look. And in fact, it has these very um, blurry edges that I think look great as water. And I like the white showing through, but if you don't, you could do it on some colored cardstock instead, or you could lay down a base coat of a color. I think the white kind of mimics the movement of the ocean, maybe ocean foam or something like that. As mentioned, this is a Lawn Fawn collab, so the Lawn Fawn should be coming. They don't have stencils at Lawn Fawn. Good thing for my pocketbook because I love all things Lawn Fawn. But here I am using the Lawn Fawn Winter Otter. And that's kind of like you might think initially, like, why are you making an ocean scene for winter? But the winter otter makes it perfect. I usually make a lot of ocean scenes in the summertime because there's so many fun ways to make it ocean. To color the otter, I am using 110 pound Recollections cardstock. And I'm going to try to show you my marker caps up there in the corner. I'm going to start with my darkest and blend out to my lightest. I've tried this technique recently. I think it saves a bit of time coloring, but for my personal style, not as much, just because I'm really trying to work on deeper contrast. So I always find myself going back in with a darker color anyway, but I'm using the darkest color on the very edges, the left and right edges, so that it gives a look of the otter being rounded and having some dimension. I am only adding the lightest hint of my dark color so that I can keep those shadows really dark. And as mentioned before, I go in with my darkest marker at the very end and add a little, a couple little taps of it without ever blending it out. I don't do any blending after that last little bit, just so that it really deepens and strengthens that shadow. Now here I'm using E37, 35, and 33 got cut off, sorry about that, but I'm actually going to go all the way down to a 31 in a minute when I see that as I blend out I actually have room for a fourth color. The more colors you use, the deeper the contrast you can get, but you can get great blending even with um, two colors. I just, like I said, and personally kind of have a challenge to see how I can get those deeper blends as it is something that I like. And I'm going to, again, put my shadows, the darkest areas on the very edges of the otter. And as you can see, I try to leave my lightest color 
untouched in the center. Like I'm trying not to go back over the center again. So even though I was blending everything out, there were parts of the center that I didn't touch again. And the point of that is to leave that highlight as light as possible, again, to help with the contrast. In terms of other areas, you might want to add shadow. You might want to add shadow where the scarf is touching the body. And so I'm going to go in and try to do that. And initially, I tried to make it a lighter shadow, not as deep of a shadow. But as I was going, I accidentally pulled up my darkest marker and touched it to the paper. So then I was kind of committed and I had to blend it out all the way. But um, <clears throat> a cast shadow, you could choose to be lighter or stronger from there. And I'm going to use those same colors to finish out the otter. Next up, there is the sentiment in the stamp set that says, have an otterly cozy winter. And I want to use that, but rather than using that really small sentiment, I decided that I would make it more substantial and more of an element on the card by cutting out the last word in the Coles ABCs from Lawn Fawn. So I trimmed those out right out of the pattern paper. I was thinking about doing maybe one of those eclipse techniques where you just cut out the letters and then glue them back in place. But I didn't like the readability of that. I think I've seen a lot of people do that. It looks really cool. But I've seen them do it a lot with like florals and maybe that's the difference. Maybe some floral stamps do a better job of it. But I found myself wanting to darken the letters. And I, this is what I tried at first. I used, I smushed some Distress Oxide ink onto my background here, like my uh, craft sheet. Sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. And, and then I pushed my letter into it to try to make it darker. But the Distress Crayons kind of resist other Distress Elements a bit. They, they don't um, necessarily blend with others the same way. Whereas, you know, you can put layers and layers of Distress ink on. And they react pretty well. Um, so I tried that and then I didn't really like it. I just didn't feel like you really saw the sentiment. So I'm going to go back in with another way of making the sentiment stand out. But in terms of the have an otterly cozy, I stamped all of that on some white thin strips of cardstock, layered them together. I've added my little otter that I finished coloring with those same colors and techniques that I mentioned earlier. And then I was just kind of looking around my desk. I'm like, what can I do to get some more color on here? I didn't want to color it with my Copics because I wasn't sure how they'd react with the, um, the distress crayon and distress oxide that was already underneath it. So I pulled out these mermaid markers from Jane Davenport and American Crafts because they are basically just um, ink inside of a marker you know, water-based ink, and they're made for mixed media. So I figure if anything in my stash is going to be able to stand up to the fact that I'm coloring over oxides and over distress crayon, it's going to be these because they're meant for those fun layers of all kinds of different uh, medium on top of each other. And so I just kind of loosely colored in the word winter. It's not perfect. The letters are not perfectly covered but it's enough to make that sentiment stand out and enough for me in the future to try a different technique from the beginning. So that is it for my card today. As I mentioned, this is part of a Lawn Fawn Lovers blog and I think it's a video hop, but you know, people have their blogs if you want to check those out as well. And so you can go and see a whole bunch of other winter cards made by other really talented Lawn Fawn lovers. And thank you so much for watching. My links will also be in the video description below. Have a great day. Bye.